we're going to be looking at this morning is finish strong, adding quality and test weight for greater profits. Um, I just want to remind everyone that this is approved for CCA credits. And if you, <coughs> excuse me, uh, type your name and license number in uh, the chat section, um, here you'll be able to get, uh, we'll make sure that you get the credits for that. So what we're going to talk about today, uh, start, grow, finish. Uh, the topic for today's webinar is going to be focused on finish. Uh, but first, what we're going to do is we're going to set the stage. We're going to have a quick review of the start and grow successes that uh, we're seeing out in the field here a little bit uh, this uh, spring. Um, but our focus today is predominantly going to be on corn and soybeans. Uh, and we're going to look at what's going on during reproductive plant development. How does this affect yield? And how can we use this information to maximize grain quality, yield, and profit? And lastly, how to utilize Stoller's proprietary technologies to capitalize on our plant's yield potential and maximize our farm's profits. We're going to talk about, and I try to lump this into um, somewhat of an understandable form that uh, I think anybody can, <coughs> excuse me, anybody could take to the field and talk to a farmer or producer about. Um, we're really working with with Stoller's Technologies is in this plant health arena. And if you think about all the different products we have, they kind of fit into what I call different modes of action, if you will. Much like our herbicides fall into different modes of action. And we all know that the most successful herbicides in the market in terms of weed control typically aren't our one or two mode action products, but usually our three and four mode action products. And I hope to show that a little bit in uh, today's presentation for you to kind of understand uh, better what we're trying to accomplish. Well, as we look at the industry as a whole, our plant health modes of action that are commonplace, we all know the importance of fertility and proper fertility and nutrition in our crops. Um, it's, it's common practice. Uh, fungicides are probably uh, the most marketed of anything in this plant health arena. Um, they have different modes of action within the fungicide industry, but we're still not working directly with the plant necessarily with a fungicide as we're working at killing the disease more so. And what we're really trying to focus on with our technologies is working through the plant to accomplish the same thing. Um, we also got insecticides because we all know that bugs or insects really can wreak havoc on our plant health as well. Hormone support and enhancement is kind of the first area that uh, we really kind of look at. And in this arena, we've got our, our old standby stimulate yield enhancer, um, <clears throat> which we all know what that product is, a two to one, one ratio of cytokine and gibberellic acid at auxin. And as we look at our reproductive stages of a crop, cytokinin is predominantly the, uh, especially early reproductive, predominantly the hormone that we're really looking at. And with that in mind, our Excite product is a cytokinin-based product that uh, really can uh, use just one hormone to enhance our plant at this given time. We all know the importance of stress reduction or relief in this particular health area, uh, mode of action area. We've got BioForge. We've also got Como Classic and Chelate Cobalt as options. As we all know that cobalt also is an ethylene regulator or blocker within that plant to help relieve the stress of the plant as well. Now we got foliar nutrients and support at key plant stages. And if you look at our hormone model, we all know it's kind of broken out uh, on the top part of that hormone model what nutrients are really important to that plant at any given point in time. We all also know that the um, um, nutrient in least availability to the plant is going to be the one that limits yield. With that in mind, um, I really like the Harvest More Urea Mate product here because it's a catch-all, if you will. Um, it's, it's a product that has NP and K as well as the micronutrients that a plant could need at any given point in time of growth. But we also have the Harvest Plus product that Dr. Shortell presented a, a, a webinar ago. Um, 
the micronutrient complex or nutrient complex that's with Harvest Plus really is focused on and driving photosynthesis within the plant um, more specifically. But we also have many additional Stolar products and you're all well aware of them or you're, there's the sales folks that you work with are and everybody kind of has their own favorites, if you will, um, for foliar nutrient support um, for our plants. And then we've got uh, something we've looked at, and that's the sink to source manipulation or management, if you will. Um, and that's basically what we're doing is we're trying to take the energy from the plant and tell it where to go. And we've got some uh, products here that fit into this category as well uh, that we're going to talk about, and that's sugar mover and sugar power. Two products that are nutrient based, designed to um, help that plant move the nutrients to the to the grain as they're developing and filling. We're going to look at a uh, real quick a review of start. Uh, what we were trying to accomplish with start is obviously quick even emergence, increased germination, relieve stress. Um, and early season root and shoot growth and development. And I didn't break these pictures out. There are three pictures, obviously, of different growing stages of the same plot stacked upon each other. Um, and I didn't break them out into individual treatments. But more so, what I want to show is this idea of modes of action. Um, if you look at the first um, picture on the or, uh, section on the left-hand side, what you'll find there is... Uh, a plant that's untreated and then you move to the middle box and there you've got uh, stimulate and bioforge single mode of action products um, and we've got increase and improvement over our untreated check but as you move to the left what you've got is you've got a series of four different treatments here that combine two or three different modes of action or different uh, areas that I, I just broke out uh, a slide ago at work here. And it's very easy to see that um, there's a much larger root system, a thicker stalk, um, just overall a healthier plant that's being pushed along. So when we use multiple modes of action, again, um, we have the best uh, results. As we move to grow, our goals here were to push plant development, create a thicker, more productive stalk or stem, because we all know the importance of a thick stock is obviously for storage, but also for uh, ease of mobility of uh, nutrients from the root system or the soil up through the growing plant. Also build a larger, more robust root system so we can get those nutrients out of the, out of the soil. And relieve stress to maximize ear development, because in corn we know that that ear is starting to develop already, the number uh, rows around starting V4, V5 stage. Um, and then maintain hormone balance to keep that plant pushed. And here again, um, <clears throat> we've got two different timings, <coughs> excuse me, two different timing uh, photos here. But uh, if you look at the numbers that's associated with each one of these sections, what you've got are the number of modes of action at work. And again, as you look at the two and the three mode of action, they're slightly improved or uh, over just our, our one mode and definitely significantly improved over uh, our untreated checks. Let's talk about finish. A couple quick facts. Did you know that corn can lose about 30 to 40 percent of yield potential during the reproductive crop stages under normal not what we would consider stress conditions but normal growing conditions. So you've got a lot of opportunity there to uh, have a higher yield at combine. Soybeans, on the other hand, they can lose up to 75% of yield potential during the reproductive crop stages. Now think about that a little bit. Um, you've got 75% yield loss potential happening in this reproductive stage. Um, it's pretty significant. It's part, part of the reason I think we haven't seen our soybean yields uh, necessarily as a industry grow a whole lot over the last uh, 10, 15, 20 years um, through genetics. And here's kind of an interesting fact that uh, to kind of keep in mind. You know, we always talk about fertility, uh, nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus that we're putting out in these soils and all the micronutrients. But in reality, 95% of what we're harvesting from that corn and soybean field 
is nothing more than carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. CO2 from the air and water is essentially what's combining to make 95% of what we're combining. So what are we trying to accomplish with finished applications to our crops? Drive grain fill. That's really essentially what we're trying to do. Um, and while driving grain fill, what we're trying to do is have higher quality grain, create a heavier test weight to ultimately have more yield, greater return on investment, and more profit. So how are we going to do that? We're going to reduce stress. We're going to direct the plant nutrients to the grain. Uh, key nutrients at this time to help do that are phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and boron. Uh, create more energy or have more photosynthesis. Make sure our photosynthesis is, is continuing on through this time as well because remember we're harvesting uh, sugar essentially, 95% of what we're harvesting from that crop. Um, and key players here are nitrogen, phosphorus, magnesium, manganese, and molybdenum to help with the nitrogen and phosphorus uh, metabolism and, or assimilation within the plant. And then we want to limit or prevent late season diseases. Um, and copper is probably a micronutrient uh, that can help here as much as any. So our goals of finish are to prevent plant stress, prevent or reduce pod or kernel aborts, uh, create a denser, higher quality grain, drive nutrients and sugar from the plant to the developing grains, maintain plant health, and extend the grain filling period, here's key, without delaying maturity, because we don't want to have uh, a whole lot longer maturity in that field than what the plant naturally would be doing. Um, and then maintain a higher level of photosynthesis. And I just got a few pictures up here of some trials that I had out last year, uh, kind of looking at this. Probably the end of season, the disease control is probably shown as good as any in this bottom folder directly below the uh, text box. Here you've got uh, a plant on the left-hand side that is treated with a fungicide, and the one on the right is treated with a solar finishing program along with a fungicide. So you can see the single mode versus uh, what was actually thrown at this plant, about four modes of plant health action and a significant improvement and increase in overall plant health, provided that plant to be able to have photosynthesis better and fill grain better as we move through the later part of the season. So how do we at Stoller dry grain fill? Manage stress, enhance hormones, manage the sink to source relationship, and provide nutritional support. Here's just a list of some of the products that I've talked about uh, in the past few slides here, kind of summed into one. or vegetative to reproductive transition. As a plant transitioned into reproductive stages, it really switches where it allocates its photosynthates or its sugars uh, to within the, uh, from the plant, from the growing part of the plant to the kernels. This occurs sometimes, and I would say probably oftentimes, at the expense of plant health and maintenance of other parts of the plant, including roots and the lower stalk. So we can end, end up with some disease and, and uh, other problems within that plant in the lower part of the plant because as that ear develops, it pulls it out of the lower part of the plant first. Um, and we all know what yield factor, yield is a factor of plants per acre that we set with start and grow, but our kernel seeds per plant and our kernel seeds weight, and those are driven, two of the three components are really driven here in the reproductive stages of the plant. Well, what's going on in those plants? Uh, we're going to start with corn and our different reproductive stages. Well, we've got R1, a silking. The silk emerges and grows at about an inch and a half per day until pollinated or deterioration, which starts to begin at about five days. Now, that plant is still able to pollinate up to about day 10. You get beyond that, um, you're probably not going to have pollination like you want. You're going to have some issues. Stress can cause silk emergent failure. That's what stress does at this particular point in time. We've seen a lot of that in 2012 with poor pollination issues as drought put a significant amount of stress on that plant during, um, during uh, pollinating or silking period. Then we've got R2, and this usually occurs at uh, 10 to 14 days after silking. It's called the blister stage or more commonly the brown silk stage. 
Well, starch is beginning to, starch is beginning to accumulate in the endosperm or the the uh, component, uh, the starch component of the seed, and stress at this point in time, especially, can cause kernel aborts. Um, as we move along, we move to the milk stage. That's going to, depending on your hybrid, usually occur between uh, 10 and 22 days after silking. The endosperm cell division is nearly complete. Think about that in terms of what we're trying to do with hormones and think about uh, the cytokinin or excite. What we're trying to do is drive cell division. I'm illustrating that here a little bit in the two kernels to the side. You've got uh, on the left-hand side a, a kernel, if you will. Uh, the circles are representative of cells uh, that would normally be formed in this kernel. On the, uh, the right-hand side, if you had a uh, plant that was treated with a cytokinin product like excite, you're going to have a lot more cells, a lot denser packed or more uh, cells within that seed to have a higher quality or higher uh, test weight type seed potential. <clears throat> you get much beyond R3 and all those uh, cells in that, that endosperm, they're pretty much set. You're not going to add cells much beyond R3. Uh, any continued kernel growth or is going to come from ex the expansion of those cells and starch accumulation within them. Um, stress at this stage can still cause kernel abortion, but starts to begin to reduce kernel weight. Moving along to R4, this is the dough stage. Now a lot of these applications, these finishing applications that uh, I'll share some of the results with, and most of you, some of you have seen these in the past from a year ago's uh, finishing trials. Um, happen in that R3, R3 about 20, 22 days after silking uh, is when that applications were made. So just prior to this dough stage, which usually occurs at about uh, 24 to 28 days after silking. Uh, what's going on within that seed at this point in time is we have four embryonic leaves have formed and the kernels are about 50% of their dry mature weight. Stress at this point starts to reduce kernel weight. As we Continue through the dough stage, we come to the kernel dense stage, which R5, and at that point in time, we've got our fifth and final embryonic leaf, uh, and the lateral seminal roots have all formed just prior to that seed starting to dent. And then we've got the milk line starting to form and progresses in the plant over the next three weeks or so. Um, stress during this time can limit kernel dry weight as well. So really what these finishing application trials I did a year ago looked at was driving kernel weight and seed weight um, into the later part of the season. And then we had physical maturity about 55 to 65 days after silking. This is what we call black layer. Kernel dry weight is at a maximum. Stress has little to no effect on yield unless we have insect uh, pressures or stalk issues that uh, cause the ear not to make it into the combine. <clears throat> so stress during R1 to R3 causes uh, aborts as we move to layer part R3 through R, R5 up to R6. Any stress at that point in time reduces kernel weight. So as a corn program goes, some modes of action to consider, and you can create your own program out of this if you chose to, depending on what you felt was uh, the most important um, for whatever's going on within your field at any given point in time during this reproductive time. Um, but stress reduction, and you can use BioForge, Como Classic, or Chelate Cobalt. They'll have similar effects uh, and prevent, and this would be designed to prevent kernel abortion and drive kernel weight. Um, you've got hormone enhancement to drive cell division. Remember, that's going to be key uh, prior to R4. You've got exciter stimulate here. You've got nutritional support to enhance the plants to keep that plant at high performance. Um, you can use Harvest More Urea Made or any of uh, micronutrient uh, complex. Just keep in mind that potassium, calcium, boron, and molybdenum are probably your key players here. Um, and then you've got your source to sink management um, to help drive photosynthesis, to build more sugars within that plant, uh, and to drive those sugars to uh, the seed from the plant. And there you got sugar mover and sugar power. Uh, you can mix and match and combine a program as you see fit. But I would say that your most success is going to come from when you have multiple modes of action. And the program I put together and used here a year ago um, 
which is what I would recommend between the R2, R3 application timing would be a pint of sugar power or a quart of sugar power, a pint of sugar mover. Uh, you can use four ounces of key lake cobalt or throw eight ounces of bioforge in there. Um, you can mix and match as you'd see fit. And then I put a pound of harvest for your roommate in this mix. You've got combined here basically four different modes of action going on within that plant at any given point in time. In 2015 trials individually, 19.4 bushels, uh, added a pound and a half of bushel test weight. And 2015 trials, 42.1 bushel increase when you combine, start, grow, and finish into an, a complete program. And as you look at uh, keeping keeping in mind, uh, you know we we look at a lot of uh, high yield growing uh, growers programs, and their programs really uh, encapsulate the start, grow, finish concept to them, uh, and they have significant yield increases as well. So. Let's look at the soybeans. Some challenges of soybeans. Most often, the crop management practices are complete by R1. That's probably the biggest challenge with soybeans. So spray the weeds, make sure they're dead, and we'll come in the fall with the combine. Well, often there's limited to no yield gains from early season enhancement. I'm sure many of you as agronomists and myself included have done a lot of things up front that make the plant better and at least look better look like it's going to perform better and then a lot of times you bring the combine in and there's not a lot of significant difference if any in the fall and I can't tell you how many times I've heard producers tell me this the plants look better all season long but the combine said the yield was the same now that's with early season applications well, why well 60 to 75 percent of the flowers produced in a soybean plant are aborted and stress levels uh, increase aborts, but early season stress can easily, and this is probably why we don't see necessarily the uh, benefits of early season applications that we do uh, as much or as consistently as we will with late season applications on beans. Uh, early season stress can easily offset as flowering occurs through R5. And again, we all know what yield is a component of, plants per acre, pods per plant, beans per pod and seed weight. You multiply all those together and that is ultimately what's going to give you yield. The biggest thing to keep in mind with soybeans and soybean yield is basically made in August. And I, I use August as, a, as the month, but in reality it's R3 through R7 is where our soybean yields are really being produced and made in these plants. So what's going on? Well, R1 to R2, we got flowering beginning. And we start to think of that as a reproductive time within the plant, and it really is, but what those first flowers do is it really sets a trigger off in that plant. And it tells that plant to put down uh, rapid root growth, to grow a, a massive root system underneath it. Stress is at this point in time, um, uh, period typically reduce or slow the root development, and this leads to less production of cytokinin. Remember, cytokinin is being produced in the growing root tips. That's part of the reason this plant is uh, triggered to put a massive root system underneath it or grow massively in terms of the root at this time because we're trying to build cytokinin within that plant. Uh, and that's for reproductive purposes. Well, R2.5 to R3 is really our, our pod set stage. It's the, uh, the stage within the plant that's converting as many of the flowers into pods as possible. This is really where you start to get your pods uh, coming from, is this R2 to R3 stage. Stress during this time increases the level of flower and pod aborts, reducing the pods per plant. It can also reduce the number of beans per pod. Stress at this time from high temperatures and moisture deficiencies, which if you think about early August under average years in most areas, you're probably talking about uh, dry and hot conditions. Um, what happens during those high, uh, hot and dry conditions is if you have reduced root growth. Well, when your root growth slows, cytokine production has dropped. And then you have less available cytokine for that plant for reproductive purposes. But cytokine also breaks down in high temperatures. These can all contribute to reductions in yield during this pod set stage. As they move to the R4, R5, this is pod growth or fill stage, or the start of filling. Uh, R4 marks the most crucial uh, period of plant development in terms of seed yield. 
This is the period of dry weight accumulation, uh, rapid dry weight accumulation by the pods. This is starting to fill the grain. Seeds are known for rapid pod growth, or seeds. The stage is known for rapid pod growth and beginning uh, of seed development. Stress during this time causes pod aborts and reduces seed size and weight. That pretty much will take you through the month of, at least in southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois, takes you through uh, the uh, month of August usually. Now we get to R5 and R7, that a lot of times is starting to push into, in most growing areas, the month of September. Um, stress during this period of time shortens the grain fill period and shrinks seed size and weight and reduces yield as a result. This is also the time when many diseases start to have an impact on our soybeans, causing early senescence or premature death. And a lot of times people don't recognize this. They just think, oh, the plant's maturing out in the field. Um, in reality, that plant is at a point where we've got the ethylene levels high enough in it that it is causing that plant to senesce. Um, shown in the bottom right-hand corner is a, a perfect example of what I'm talking about. You've got a bean plant untreated here that has no leaves left on it um, and is dead. Same maturity, same exact field. You've got a plant that's got three modes of plant health treatments put to it, um, and you've still got leaves on it. It's still producing sugar. It's still making photosynthesis, still filling grain. Yield significance, uh, or there's a pretty significant yield difference that can happen within our soybean plant because of that. We don't always think of uh, necessarily disease as causing premature death uh, until you see it out in the field side by side. So our soybean program, modes of action to consider, they're the same modes of action I just talked about with corn, same products, because we're essentially doing the same thing within that plant. The program recommendations are where it's going to vary a little bit. And I would say starting at R3, we really want to be, or R2 and a half even, we really want to start to manage the stress within that plant. We really want to start to make sure the nutrients are available to that plant that we need, and we start to direct that sugar towards from the plant towards those uh, flowers and developing pods. <clears throat> um, so what I would recommend you use is sugar mover at a 16 ounces per acre. Throw some Excite in there to uh, help offset any uh, lack of cytokine we may have within that plant. Throw some bioforge in there to relieve stress. And throw harvest more urea made at it as well, or a micronutrient of your choosing at it, to help um, that plant from the nutritional angle as well. We'll come back later at R5, which is probably going to fall two to three weeks later, with an application to help drive the sugars even harder from that plant leaf into the, into the beans, uh, developing beans and pods. Uh, and here we're looking at sugar mover at 16 ounces again, sugar power at 32 ounces, Como Classic at this point in time with 8 ounces, and Harvest More Urea made at 2.5 pounds per acre. Really designed to drive everything to the uh, kernel, or developing seed, excuse me. Um, 2015 trials with R3 application alone, if you just did one, uh, a year ago, we had 4.2 bushel per acre increases. We had a significant increase in pods and seeds per acre, um, but only about 4.2 bushel increase in actual yield. R5 alone, if you did just the R5 application, uh, last year's results were 7.4 bushel per acre in trials. Full season program, when you combine at least three stolar applications, start, grow, finish, or that idea of it, um, last year where we had three applications that we had a 12.7 bushel per acre increase. Trials uh, that I had out that we did these with uh, ranged from 8.6 to 16.8 bushels per acre. So the full season management is key, but very, very important is to stay towards this reproductive applications and relieve the stress and provide the plant everything it needs during the month of August on our soybeans. In summary, full season management of our crops leads to the greatest return on investment and profits. Finishing the crop is key. We have about 30 to 40 percent of yield loss potential in corn happening uh, uh, during the reproductive stages, 
but more importantly, we've got up to 75% of yield loss potential happening in soybeans. And keep in mind, soybean yield is made in August. Manage plant health modes of action. Limit plant stress. Feed key nutrients for plant growth stage, the plant growth stage that you're at. And provide hormonal supplementation or enhancement. And manage the sink to source uh, relationship within your plant as well. Here's probably the biggest uh, part here is teach your customers the value of finishing their crops. Help them preserve the yield the plant is capable of producing. I'm hoping that's what you took away from the presentation here. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, my email is down below. Those of you that have my phone number.